You probably loved her as goth girl Wednesday Adams in The Adams Family or Distressed Diva Ana Vargas on TV Smash. Now she's on an awkward first date with Zachary Levi in the new musical comedy First Date. Please welcome Krista Rodriguez. Hello. Thank you for being here. Oh my God. You know this is a dream come true. L love the, I like it. Did the dream come true to be I was here? Like, I love show people. It's my favorite thing in the world. And now Let's I'm talk here. about I'm really this. Excited. Do you have any, yeah. any favorite episodes? Uh, I any? loved Jeremy's episode. Uh -huh. um, I loved the bloopers of your intro. Oh, that Jeremy was, Jordan, yes. Yeah, Jeremy yes. Jordan. Your Smash yeah. co-star, Jeremy Jordan. My Smash co-star, Jeremy Jordan. <laughs> um, I don't know, like the first ones were just so like, I remember Aaron Tveits, Lauren uh -huh. Benanti's like way in the beginning and I was like, Good, I like so hearing cool. the ones that just come to mind. Yeah, they, it's so cool to like be able to sit with someone for a while and not have everything all chopped up. Well, I'm happy bite. to sit with you. Thanks. Uh, because look at you. I love, I mean, I feel like, I actually first met you when you were joining the cast of A Course Line. Uh-huh. And we did yeah, a we feature did those with interviews. all the new, all the, the new stars of a course line. Mm -hmm. And look at you. I know. Look at your career. It's amazing. I love looking at your resume because I go, wow, look at her. <laughs> Thank you. And now you're the star of a brand new Broadway musical. I know. It's crazy. I, I, it happened really fast and, and I'm so happy and it's just been really fun. So you just started performances. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a musical comedy. So now you're actually in front of audiences. Yes. Laughing, enjoying. Yes. How, how's it going? It's good. We just had our first preview last night. So um, it's the first time. I mean, you know, especially when you're doing a comedy, you're sitting in a rehearsal room with like 10 people that have seen the show a million times. Right. So you're like, what if I do it like this? And they're just not laughing. So it's we needed this audience. And half of you wants to be like, I think we need a little more time. And the other half is like, we have to rip off the Band-Aid and just see how they feel. And it went really well. Everyone was cracking up. And it's just a really fun show. It's an hour and a half. There's no intermission. We just It's like a movie. You know, it just like blasts right through. It's like laugh, 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 a lot of heart, and then love. So you play this girl named Casey. Casey, mm -hmm. And she's a Soho artist, is that true? Yes, she works in an art gallery. She's like, she's just your basic, like jaded New Yorker. Uh -huh. um, she's gone through the dating scene a lot. Uh, she's a uh, self-subscribed uh, serial dater, mm -hmm. and uh, she, she's been set up on this date with her sis that her sister set up, and She's been told that the guy is like looks like Brad Pitt, and then shows up, and God, it looks like Zachary Levi. <laughs> not <laughs> bad. Not bad, but you know. <laughs> uh, so he wears glasses, though. It's to he totally. Oh, you have to nerd him up. up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's kind of like a bumbly, nervous guy, and she could eat him for breakfast. Uh -huh. And um, but you know the and then the rest of the cast is um, there's five other members, right. and they play the waiter and two other patrons in the restaurant who become. Uh, different characters throughout the night and uh, Zach and I are the only ones we're in a real-time date and we're the only ones that stay ourselves and okay. everyone else becomes our the voices in our head and the baggage that keeps us from getting together and his ex-fiance and my therapist and my naggy sister and his best friend and they all kind of chime in and and hilarity ensues. So who was involved in the show first you or Zach Levi? I was. You were? I was. Okay yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. Um, and then, so did you have to have like a chemistry test with him? Was there no, an audition with him? Or? No, not at all. In fact, um, the story goes, uh, I met Zach about a year ago. He oh. uh, was doing a pilot out in LA and I tested uh, to play his sister-in-law. Ah. And um, uh, we spent a couple hours together, just got to know each other. And then uh, didn't see him again. I didn't get the job. This pilot didn't get picked up. It was, you know, by and large, a failure for both well, of us. It didn't get picked up because they didn't cast Krista Rodriguez. Thank you. I mean, that's what I think. But, you know. <laughs> uh, so then, like a year later, I, um, I got this show. And it, like I said, it was very quick. It was like I auditioned on Monday and they called me on Wednesday. And um, I wasn't even really thinking about doing Broadway again because I had just come off of Smash. Right. And thinking I had lived in L.A. and trying to do sitcom stuff and all this other thing. And this sort of popped up and then they mentioned, uh, you know, we, we have an offer out to a star and um, Zachary Levi and I was like, that's so crazy because I, I met him and I know him and I know he's been wanting to do Broadway and um, so we talked a little bit and uh, he was really interested in doing the show and he came to New York and he and I went out and got dinner and talked about the show and then I didn't hear from him for a couple weeks and then he texted me and said, I'm going to do it and I was like, Holy crap! Wow. <laughs> so now we're so no, we had no. Um, they just sort of banked on this chemistry, uh -huh. and we have it in spades. I mean, he's the best, and he's so. What's so great, great about him? Tell me. I mean, he's a great guy, and he's super um, 
you know, I mean, down to earth, that sounds so lame, but um, he really is, and, and he's new. I mean, he's getting his equity card with this show. Wow, <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> so it's kind of fun to be the veteran in a way, right. like with somebody who's yeah. definitely more established in his career than I am, but um, he's super smart. I mean, he and I really, uh, we can spar uh, mentally, uh, especially when we were creating the show and, and uh, solidifying our characters and... You know, he and I will just like get into it. We'll get into the script and we'll get into the logic and we're really trying to like, you know, uncover everything. And um, he's super talented. He's charming as hell. I mean, he's walking away with just the heart of this show. People love him and he's got a beautiful voice. And I don't know, it's just like worked out great and we're having a, the best time. So it's obvious because you're in a show called First Date mm -hmm. and it's all about a, a woman finding love. Right. Have you found love? Have I found love? Yeah. Several times. What's your situation now? People should know. Your fans should really? know. Really? Yeah, they should know if you're available. Uh, so they can hang out the stage door. Or... <clears throat> they, they do. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Send you flowers. Or... Yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a single woman. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Do you feel like you're lucky in love? I mean, I know you've been in some relationships. I, I, I do feel like I'm lucky in love. I've had some really great relationships. I don't regret anything. I, I think I've got pretty good taste. Uh -huh. um, you know, it's hard to be in this business and yeah. keep a solid relationship and not that you know I've, I've given it quite a few goes so um, you know I'm, I'm ready to put all that aside and get the real thing coming up soon but um, you yeah. know. Do you have that um, you said your character is just like kind of jaded yeah it's, it's hard to sort of be in New York and it sounds like you're also in California but it's hard to yeah. sort of live in New York and to avoid getting that do you feel like you're jaded at I all? I mean, and... I definitely think there was definitely a point a few years ago where the jaded meter was like really? off the charts. What yeah. Brought, what brought that up? I mean, I, I lived in New York for 11 years almost. Right. So I'm not, you know, wide eyed anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been in this business. I've been working in it for a while. And I did, I did um, Spring Awakening, Chorus Line, In the Heights, and Adam's Family all in a row. Three of them it overlapped. Was like, really? Each yeah, other. It was, yeah. It was fast. And it was a lot. And eight shows uh -huh. a week is hard. And I just remember kind of being like, I want to do television. So I moved to L.A. And that's where I'm from. I'm from Orange County. Yeah. So um, kind of wanted the sun. And, and the first, like, <laughs> few weeks there, I was like, why does anyone live anywhere else? <laughs> I was doing a pilot. And I was like, you know, I it was all set up in a hotel with a car. And I was like, this is the best. And I got the sunburn on the left arm from hanging it out the car, <laughs> you know. And then uh, some of my friends who are from New York, they're like, yeah, just wait till you're there for a year and you have no idea what you did and like the whole thing, you know, and uh -huh. I'm like, I'm like, oh gosh, you guys. And then like a year went by and really? I was like, oh my God, I remember a lot of outdoor lunches and I remember <laughs> like, oh, just a lot of traffic, but like, um, so I really am grateful for that experience because I ended up having to move back to New York for personal reasons and then I got smashed like a month later. Wow. So um, I really... I really needed to miss New York, mm -hmm. and I did, and I came back, and I don't ever want to leave. I'm just like, ev I love it again. Mm -hmm. Everything about it is glistening and glowing, and it's, you know, and Broadway is back, and I'm just like, I'm back, and I love it. So I, I'm really grateful that I had that kind of vacation from it, but uh -huh. now I'm, I'm a lifer. I, I was reading about both you and Zach before this interview, and I found out he's a good Christian boy. Mm -hmm. And it immediately made me wonder if he was a big fan of Colby's Clubhouse. <laughs> I don't think he knows about that. <laughs> uh, well, he will now. So I know about it. And, uh -huh. um, you, you grew up in California. I did, yes. And when you were a child, uh -huh. you wound up on this Christian television TV show. show, which mm -hmm. thankfully lives on on YouTube. I know, thanks to just actually one fan. Well, that found fan. Found all of them and put them all on That fan gave YouTube. me a lot of pleasure before yeah. you walked in this room because there you were, pretty yep. little girl, long hair. Yeah, very long hair. And I saw- A lot a, of crooked teeth. I enjoyed an episode where Zane had to go to the hospital. Okay, Zane I Zane went to the hospital and there was a lot of, you know, it's not really talked about why he was in the hospital, but you guys all had to deal with it and you uh -huh. sang some awesome 50s songs, I think. Okay. And I that, believe you. That was pretty cool. <laughs> what was that like being you? Not all the kids were as quick on the choreography as you were, <laughs> but like you, you were nailing. You were nailing it. I was, I was an ambitious child, um, and I, you know, I've been singing and dancing forever. And even in school, I went to, a, I went to a very like sports focused middle school uh -huh. and uh, I, I was competitive. I mean, I could not play a single sport. I was terrible, but I was the the just most competitive bench warmer you've ever seen. <laughs> um, so whatever I do, I just 
uh -huh. do it full out. And uh, I, we had a choir, and no one else cared about the choir, and I was just singing my lungs off all the time. Everyone would always turn around, like, who is singing so loud? Wait, so, where do you think that came from? You know, I really don't know. I, I was always, like, we have pictures of me when I was nine months old, like, pulling myself on a piano and playing <laughs> and just shouting. Um, so it was always in me. My mom is um, very talented, uh, but has like crippling stage fright. She's actually huh. getting over it. My dad is the youngest of seven boys and like a total ham. So I think I got like a little bit okay. of both. Uh -huh. But um, so even in like things like Colby's Clubhouse, I, I was just like, you know, this is my moment. I'm always going to oh, yeah. take my moment. But I was always a really quick learner, and I was a little bossy. I, I still kind of am bossy, but uh, I try to I try to temper that now. I find that people don't like being told what to do. So, what's it like being on a a, a Christian TV set? I mean, like it was I obviously mean, teaching good messages. Yeah, and nothing really. It would be awesome if right now, like, if you just turned into like one of these messy girls. You know, <laughs> like I'm not going to name names, but these messy Twitter. Twitter messes and you know and like there's like oh she was one time she was on yeah Kobe's clubhouse. she used to be like a good girl she and used now to be a good girl. she throws bongs out windows <laughs> we're not naming names no I'm still a very good girl um, <laughs> this is T and I get nine hours of sleep a night and I'm really responsible <laughs> wait I have to say I enjoyed the long hair I, I've only known oh, you with you. the sassy I know. Mm -hmm. the sassy when did the sassy hair cut come into your right life? when I moved to New York I came to New York for college I uh -huh. went to NYU and uh, the my first Thanksgiving break of my freshman year, just decided to become a New Yorker and cut it all off. And um, I love it. I think when I had long hair, I just sort of like, I felt like everybody else, uh -huh. a Disney princess, which is great, but I, um, I just wanted to be a different kind of girl. And I think it fits my personality more. And uh -huh. I, and now I couldn't possibly, I mean like it grows out a little bit and I'm like, I gotta cut it, I gotta cut it. So. Um, I don't know. Maybe uh, one day I'll have long hair again. But I was listening to the radio this morning, and, uh -huh. and a certain singer came on, and it made me go, Chris Rodriguez needs to do a Pat Benatar musical. Oh, my God. That's so great. Right? Would you do it? I would definitely. If I had, like, $10 million, and I could pay you a good do salary you? and Let's get a good it. writer, could we do it? Y Pat get Benatar. a good writer, please. <laughs> yeah, we need a good writer. Pat Benatar musical. The yeah. Pat Benatar musical might be a little, you know. <laughs> there's, there's, like, some landmines there that could not, not go well. But, uh, yeah, would I mean. Would you do it? Yeah. That's some good music, huh? I did wear an outfit the other day, and one of our swings was like, you look like Pat Benner today. See? I, I see it. I see it. That little. was like one of my early audition songs. Oh, which one? Um, Heartbreakers. Oh, or, that's, what know, I, that's what was on the radio yeah, this course. morning. See? Um, it, was, it, was, it was fate that I heard that Don't song. Don't you mess around with me. <laughs> I mean, right? You went to the uh, Orange County... High School of the Arts, High which School is now the, the Orange County School of the Arts. And do you have any classmates that we might know? I mean, I'm of assuming course. this is like literally. You know all of them. Yeah. Um, Lindsay Mendez. Was I th yeah, I thought who, you guys who I just saw in Wicked on Monday, and she's phenomenal. Uh -huh. um, Matt Morrison, right. um, Susan Egan, Scott Barnhart, who's now in Book of Mormon, Eric Altimus, who's in Pippin. Um, you did shows with these people? Yeah. Now, you, oddly, were directed by Francis Ford Coppola. I was, yes. When you were in high school. When I was which in like high school. Which is like the strangest, yes. that's the weirdest L.A. thing to be able to say. Like, oh, you did high school shows? Yeah, uh, I yeah. did too. Francis, Francis Ford, Ford Coppola. Coppola. Yeah. And Dermot Mulroney, and Dermot Mulroney was your co-star. Mm -hmm. He was my co-star. This, this, is, this is ridiculous. It was crazy. And it was I, Gidget. It was Gidget. He wrote um, a musical version of Gidget. He had heard about our high school and came down there and auditioned us. And I got the role of Gidget. Was it basically like a cheap out of town tryout? Yeah. Like I'm just gonna do it basically. at a high school. It's yeah. A lot of talented people. Yeah. <laughs> and we just spent the summer with Francis and uh, Sophia, his daughter, came yeah. and helped out, and uh, like you know, and then Dermot was was in the show, who was just lovely and so wonderful, and taught me a lot. Was and he dreamy? He is dreamy. He was, was he shirtless? It was like a surf, he was shirtless. He was like a yeah, I was. A, I was. I mean, I had no clothes on either. There's a picture of me like in the L.A. Times, like this big, just in a bikini top. You know. Oh. Yeah, it was like a great experience, and Francis was lovely. I just saw him recently again, and we were just like reminiscing about that wild wow. summer we had. And it got you ready for your Broadway debut as Bikini Girl. Yes. And other roles. And other roles. In Good Vibrations. Uh -huh. I was wearing a bikini then, always in a bathing suit. Yeah. Which I know it's easy. You know, I know people ask you all the time because it was a big flop at the time. Yeah. It's not really. A, it's not really one of those flops, people. Yeah, because nowadays it's not a flop. We ran for four months. Like. Oh right. That's a long time. Right. You but know? it was ridiculous. Oh, yeah. I watched it. How so many times? I, I saw it multiple times. It changed uh -huh. a lot. It sure did. Oh, my God. Yeah. That show, like, every night you must have been Yeah. Doing... I mean, I was a swing, so oh. it was uh, it was even crazier for me. I, I covered nine roles 
two leads. I went on on our second preview. Wow. I, I did all my parts. I played both leads. Like, I did a ton of stuff for a four-month flop. Wow. Like, I really got, I cut my teeth on Broadway for sure. It's interesting. Your like your resume really does go from you know you've done ensemble work, mm -hmm. you've covered <clears throat> you've covered roles. Yep. Um, do you? And a lot of actors don't have all that diversity in their resume. What was the best experience of being on that part of Broadway Company? You were in the Bleachers of Spring Awakening, right? Yeah, you were one of the. I was one of the Bleacher Singers. Yeah, right? and I covered all those roles. I played all of those roles. I too. mean, it's crazy. It must just you just. Must I mean, be... I played twenty-seven roles on Broadway. <laughs> I mean, like I, it's insane. From everything you've covered, that's crazy. Yeah, with like no rehearsal, most of them. Um, so it, ma it makes me think you must be wildly talented. Well, thank you. Um, <laughs> I think that swinging and understudying is like swinging. Yeah. <laughs> Swinging on Broadway, swinging. With Krista Rodriguez. I'm a swinger. <laughs> um, it's a different, if it's different skill. I mean, yes, there's there's talent involved, and I, I, but I think some sometimes it happens that you just sort of fall in between roles, and they think, yeah, you can play all of them. You know, mm -hmm. I just I think it took a little while to get the one role that was right for me, which mm -hmm. was Adam's Family. You know, mm -hmm. where I didn't kind of I could have played this one and I could have played that one. So. You know, I was 19 when I made my Broadway debut. Like, you know, most people aren't expecting to be the star of mm -hmm. their show right away, you know, unless it's Spring Awakening. Um, and then with Spring Awakening, uh, I I saw the show off Broadway and I lost my mind over it. I was just like, yeah. I called my mom and I was like, I'm going to be in this show. I know they're going to Broadway. I know I said I would never swing again, but I'll sweep the floors if they let me be a part of the show. Mm. Like, I just... I was the biggest fan, and then um, then they said I was too old, hmm. and I was twenty, and uh, <laughs> getting that out of the way quickly, and uh, I did not take no for an answer, and I went to the open call, but then I had to leave because they were running late, and I had my audition for In the Heights, and my agents were like, "You got? They've already told you they're not giving you the show. Like, go to In the Heights. Like, you might actually get this job." So that was when In the Heights was off Broadway. Yeah, and um, and so I cried. I left the audition. I cried the whole way. I was like, I can't believe I'm not even gonna get a chance. And then they found out that I was at the Omaha call and I couldn't be seen, so they let me have an appointment. And then I got the job like a week later. So, so don't take no, don't take an no for an answer. I mean, don't be obnoxious, but like if you <laughs> have it in your heart, like I knew that I knew this was what I could do. So, um, so I did it and I loved it. It's still to this day a highlight of my career. And then to watch my friends become mega stars. Yeah, what it, that is, it's crazy. It, crazy. It's crazy. And, what's and I happening. remember, you know, I watched the whole show every night because I was on stage and. Um, I just, I remember being like, I don't ever want to do a show where I, where I have to be backstage again. I, uh, to watch performances change and watch, you know, John Gallagher's giving the performance of a lifetime during mm. that show and, and to see him win a Tony and to see him like grow this role and then Jonathan Groff, who's like just the sweetest person on the planet and like just watch him get everything he's dreamed of from a child mm. and then Leah just like skyrocketing. I mean, just like this whole experience Who, for I, everybody. I don't, I don't know, I don't know her. Uh, her name's Leah Michelle. Uh, oh, she was in she's, Ragtime. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She was a little girl in Les Mis. <laughs> um, you, you, sh you'll see her around. Um, so it, it was really exciting. It also occurs to me that you, you've been involved in a lot of shows with crazy fan bases. Yes. Which is probably why there's so many uh, Chris Rodriguez fans out there. Oh, well, that would be Because I, there's I a lot of stage, a lot of, lot of aggressive lot, stage door action. Yeah. With, you put all those shows together. Yeah, especially, I mean, Spring Awakening was kind of our first, like, uh, yeah. Foray, and in fact, yeah. um, one of our one of our biggest fans, I, he's gonna kill me. One of our biggest fans was Andy Mantis. Are he you went serious? On the tour. Smash co-star was at the stage door yeah. getting your autograph. Yeah, and, and then he went on the tour, and we were like, "Hey, super fan Andy is like really wow. talented." <laughs> and then we ended up on Spring, and I mean, on uh, Smash together, and now he's one of my closest friends. I mean, wow, crazy. That is crazy. I mean, I was a super fan too, so of Spring Awakening. So he's sort of like, <laughs> right, you know, right. The super fans got on the bus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love our fans. Everybody, you know, the fans are the best part. And I, of course, want to acknowledge that you are a Broadway.com Audience Choice Award winner. I am. For the highlight Adams of my family. life. For real. Like, that you won that award? Yeah. Highlight of my life. Was, we didn't even have a proper ceremony back then. But, I know. I know. We owe you a proper ceremony. That's true. That was a big deal. That's uh, really exciting. And there the, were some heavy hitters in that. The category. Adams family uh -huh. was... I, I, what was it like being in that? Because obviously it was this huge show, yeah. big, biggest show coming of the year. It, you know, if you if you sat down with a bunch of industry insiders right before Adam's Family came, they would have said like, "Well, oh. best musical is probably Adam's Family," mm. or whatever, whatever yeah. the other show was at the time. And then everyone was so mean. Yeah. I mean, I People actually, mean. I just thought it was funny. I mean, I, I thought Nathan Lane was oh my hilarious. God. Like, 
Nobody is. And as people good were so mean. Feeling. People were so mean to that show. Yeah. What was it like being being uh, wrapped in all the meanness? Mean girls and boys. You know, kind of boys. since Adam's family, I've been involved in things where people like to be mean. <laughs> <laughs> people are a little mean about Smash. And, yeah, we're gonna, yeah. You know, we'll get there. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, part of it is just the culture has changed. Everybody has an opinion and everybody yeah. can listen to yeah. it. Um, uh, the show, you know, sometimes when you have expectations like that, you can't please everybody. And yeah. especially when you have a show with source material that, you know, Everybody's already written an Adam Sandler right. musical in their head before right. they come see it. Right. We're we're not we're never gonna please everybody. So um, that was a bummer, and it was a bummer in that way because you know the show, while it was critically panned, was a crit. I mean, a commercial success. Yeah, the audience we made loved it. One point three million dollars a week. Right. You know, it wasn't. It ran for two years. It was not a flop. Right. Um, but there was sort of that feeling of like. We're here. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> How are you going to feel? Like, do you like us today or do you not like us today? You know, and then I it's would, like. I always wonder what it's like. It, it must be hard because you watch your co stars react. Yeah. The, the energy of the whole thing is just sort of. Right. Like, it must be hard to sort of I mean, keep up the. We had great audiences, though, yeah, and it feeds yeah. you. That's what yeah. you need. Like I said, with a comedy, like, you just need that audience reaction. So that, that was really what kept us going, and Jackie's. Broadway.com video vlog uh, <laughs> kept us uh, backstage hijinks, and we just all got along, and we had a great time. And I, you know, it was a bummer that there was that sort of backlash every time. Every time something exciting would happen, people would say something mean, and so right. it was like, you know, we're just right. we're just doing what we're what we love and what people are asking us to do. Right. The fans kept coming, you know. Right. So. So you get cast on Smash. Yeah. For season two, yes, which is the sort of there's a, there's a new showrunner, yeah. everything there's Brand new, new, new actors, over. some actors left, and everything was just sort of like let's let's make this work, let's right. like let's re redo this for season two, yeah. Um, and I think it did work a lot better. I mean, I, agree. I, I enjoyed yeah. season two. Mm -hmm. um, but you film it all the yes. way you know. You're, so you're like way into the season yeah. by the time it premieres. We season shot two. seventeen episodes, and we premiered on our. 14th episode. Right. So you're shooting. almost so, done. Yeah, I mean, we, Hit List was already up. It was almost up against for the Tonys against yeah. uh, Bombshell. And we had all. moved to Broadway by the time we had premiered. Yeah. Right. All that stuff. Yeah. And then the show premieres uh -huh. and womp womp. Uh -uh. Like the ratings, the ratings don't turn around. Yeah. And people are still mean. Well, we got a new time slot. I mean, I have to, yeah, I have to put slots. that out there. Yeah. That was a rough. Tuesday at 10. And we're not, you know. The, well, it's better than Saturday. <sighs> well. <laughs> I know. Didn't really change that much, though. People who were DVRing it were DVRing it right, anyway, right, you know. Right, right. But the issue is, we're sort of, you know, TV hasn't quite caught up with how people watch TV. So, yeah, yeah. you know, people, I'll, I'll see people and they're like, we're so devastated that it was canceled. We DVR'd it every week. And I was like, you're why it's canceled. <laughs> right. Your fault. <laughs> it doesn't count. <laughs> right. uh, but, right, you know, right. it. it but what was it like for the company? And I know that by the time you filmed the last episode, you all were like, "Okay, we're getting canceled." I mean, yes. it wasn't it wasn't announced for very many months later. No. But by the time you were filming the end, you all knew like we're doing the final yeah. episode. We of rewrote this the show. finale as like so. A did, did, was that did that sort of bring the cast together? Or I know that it was sort of a. What, was, mean, what was it like on the set? Uh, it was an interesting time. I mean, we were all really optimistic in the beginning and we were ha just like hoping people would love it and what was hard for me was the was back was the mean the hate watching and the backlash um, how did you actually experience that like well you, I like, joined read Twitter crap online <laughs> oh Twitter yes I joined Twitter uh, in <laughs> January and uh, based on actually Andy kind of pressured me into it and the show was like we'd love you to live tweet yeah. and I was like okay you know I'll do this and uh, the first episode, people saying things and then, then like cop or whatever tagging me in it. Right, I'm so like, they want you to read it. Like, what? The, what? <laughs> What's happening? Who are these people? I, I mean, right. It, it, that was like a whole new thing for me that I was like, really? I, I'm I have a hard and fast rule. I mean, since Good Vibrations, I don't read anything online right. if, I, if I can help it. But sometimes you you can't. I mean. Right. I remember one time they, there was an article about BB in New York Magazine, and I was like, oh my God, this is a great article. And underneath the first comment in all capital letters was like, Wednesday was atrocious. I was like, <laughs> I didn't even, I, I can't even. You're not even looking for what it. What the right. heck, you know? <laughs> 
you just never know where it's coming from and your friends are tweeting about smash and right. oh this would never happen and right, i'm right. like well they don't do surgeries in the dark but they do it on gray's anatomy because <laughs> it looks pretty you know <laughs> And, you know, we tried to, you know, especially with the new cast, Andy and Jeremy and I, we had all done Broadway before. You know, yeah. we tr we put our two cents in as yeah. to what was realistic and what was not. But we we're also making a drama. So. What was your favorite, um, you got to that amazing number. That silk that number. airborne number. Like, if Crazy. you were going to pick, like, one, like, chunk of all your Smash footage, like, to live on, is that the moment that was sort of like, Yeah, wow. I mean, that was, to be able to be given that number was huge. Yeah. I, I, I do, like, make a joke. I'm like, it's because I'm the only one who's dumb enough to get up there. That they were like, <laughs> hey, you want to do this number? 30 feet in the air with four hours of rehearsal? Um, it was... It was amazing, and it was terrifying, and it pushed me. I, I had some breakthroughs during that, and and we were supposed to shoot it when Hurricane Sandy hit. We had to postpone shooting oh, wow. for a week. So the day before, I'm like ready, I'm pumped, and then they're like, never mind, we're not shooting it because the world is falling apart. And then it was like three days later, where they're like, we're coming back to work, and then they were like, never mind, we're not. And then oh. then the next day, and then the next day, and they, I had no idea when we were shooting it. Wow. So it was sort of like. It was crazy, and then all of a sudden I'm up there, and it was wild. It was, it, they had just mentioned it the week before. I, I believe the exact words were, Krista, are you afraid of heights? And I said, I don't think so. And they're like, great. And then, then we get the script, and I was like, Bull. But um, it was amazing. I mean, that was amazing. Um, just being on the show was I mean, it was really fun. And, yeah. Uh, you know? We had a good time, and I guess to answer your earlier question, when we found out that the show wasn't doing well, I think the morale was low for yeah. a while because we, we felt like we did a better show this year, yeah. and we felt like we did all that we could, and maybe we were trying to please a group of people that didn't want to be pleased. Right. So right. that was a little sad, but... Um, Broadway people are very critical about their own yeah. thing. Yeah, you know I, mean, I mean, nobody like likes to... Not to say... And I, I agree that it's not the most, the most realistic, yeah. but... Nobody likes to have a mirror up to themselves. And, um, you know, some of the people on the show are not from the community. And for me to come back and, and feel like, you know, I hope that I represented my own group of people well, mm -hmm. you know, there was a little bit of pressure on that way. But um, they don't seem too mad because I'm, I'm back on Broadway. So. I was excited to hear you were back. Mostly yeah. because I said, we can get around show people. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we can make dreams come true. Dreams come true. <laughs> so um, everyone needs to check this this uh, first date out, yes, huh? Yes, please. Over at the Long Acre Over Theater. Over at the Long Acre Theater. It's so fun. I guarantee you will laugh your guarantee. patootie off. And um, I do. I guarantee. Honestly, if I had the money, I would give you your money back. But I don't. <laughs> uh, maybe if we run for a long time, I'll have the money and I'll give it to you back if you don't laugh. But uh, it's dang funny and, um, and sweet. And you might be going on some first dates yourself during the run of first dates. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a little busy. <laughs> well, she's a little busy. Well, I'm thrilled. I, I, it's been so great watching all these things happen to you. Thank and you. And you, you're fabulous in everything. And I can't wait to see first date. Thank and you. They're all going to go see it. Yes, and please. They're all going to love it. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.